Hey gang, welcome to the channel. 2010 Nissan 370 Nismo. Customer states, make my car go pshh. How cool is that? Come on inside, I'll take you along for the install. Show you how this all goes. Um, hopefully it goes the way I want it to. We'll see. Let's put it back up. All right, gang, so the first step, maybe not the first step, but the first step that we did was took the car apart. So wheels and tires are off of it, the suspension's out of it. Um, we got the original struts. So the green struts are the ones that came out of the front. That strut right there, the silver one, was the original ones. I thought we were getting air over coils. As it turns out, we got the whole assembly. So the back of the car is disassembled. We're ready to run wiring and hoses. I said the uh, front end's all apart on it. We're ready to reinstall. Engine compartment and cross brace is all out. We're ready to install. And then up on the table here, or my little makeshift table, um, here's all the new goodness. So we got rear shocks, rear airbags, front struts with airbags, our compressor, our management system, a lot of instructions. We got this nice little mount that's going to mount the uh, air management system on an angle. In here is all our tubing and electrical. Over there, you see poking out from the styrofoam, is the air tank. Now, the one thing that we are doing is that the owner of the car uh, cut out some wood that's going to go in the back, and that's what's actually going to mount everything. And, of course, you know, we'll drill holes and, you know, make it so that the lines and wires can come through. So, here we go. All right, gang, so everything's taken apart. We're ready to start putting stuff back together. What you want to do is you want to get all your parts laid out, okay? And it's going to look like there's a lot. And at the same time, not a lot. Oh, it's just struts and this and that. Yeah, okay. So I like to do the mechanical work first, then come back and do all the electrical, um, which is the way I'm going to do it here. So the first step before you put in the struts is that when you take out your old struts, you're going to have these little gaskets. Now, unfortunately, these guys are pretty beat up. I'm going to do my best to try to use them. Uh, these are a dealer-only item. <clears throat> we ain't got time to wait, so they're going to go in. They can always come back, and we can knock them off. This thread sealant they put on here, listen, get yourself some liquid Teflon or thread sealant or whatever. This is Loctite 592. Put that on. You can use a, a Teflon tape, but I prefer the liquid because you don't have to worry about putting, wrapping it the wrong way and having it unwrap, right? You also don't have to worry about it missing any of your threads or rolling up threads or anything like that. Another note is in the instructions, they call out the left and right uh, strut. So they put this sticker on here. That is not the part number. The part numbers are down here on the bottom. The way this is going to go in, also have your tools laid up, ready to go. So, this is real easy. That's all you need. Now, at this point, I'm going to put that bracket right in my way. Alright, at this point, I'm going to loosen that up so I can put this together. Stand by. As I said, I'm going to move that out of the way. And I'm going to get this started by hand and then I'll run it down with a wrench. Go find a wrench. Let's 
says to tighten it hand tight and then one and three quarter turns. I'm just going to go until it stops. Right about there looks good. All right. Uh, let me find a little red. Now, this can go in the car. Alright, here we go. Pretty uneventful. That's exactly what we want. Now is not the time for exciting explosions, dropping parts, having hardware fall into the abyss. All right. So now. What you want to do is you want to make sure you get your hand behind all this. Make sure there's no chance of this uh, strut hitting anything once you know the bag hitting anything once it's inflated. I think we're going to be fine. Uh, I'll check it again after we actually get air in the system. Uh, as far as my hose routing, I think. up following this path under the car uh, using the skid plate that's under or the splash pants under the car to kind of hold everything so this in place wires back in and we'll figure out how to get this guy is supposed to attach probably got to spin this bracket here all the way around no one might look I also want to take pictures of this before you take it apart. Oh, that looks to be about what I remember. Alright. Alright, cool. Put that gun we have it in here. Try to be able to pick this up, put our bottom bolt back in. And then the strut will be done. And then we only got to do the other side and then the back. So, if anybody were to ask, or has a need to know or wants to know, I would say there's about 10 minutes involved so far. Okay, I'm going to get this buttoned up over here. Reassembly is just a reverse of disassembly, so nothing exciting to see here. All right, so I have everything loosely in place, okay? I mean, nothing's tight, all right? What I'm checking for is to make sure I put this thing back together the right way. I want to make sure 
every nut and bolt that came out and that holds something is going to go back the way that's it's supposed to. So we have a brake hose, ABS sensor. Um, make sure that it looks like when the wheel is turning, it's not going to run into anything. Again, run your hand back here. If you can get your whole hand back here, you're most likely not going to hit the airbag on anything to do with the car. Um, my path for the airline. I said I want to put a strap here. Run that down, and then from there under the car. The uh, strut mounts are 28 foot pounds, and the bottom is going to be whatever the impact can do. Okay. All right, gang. So <clears throat> I have uh, my strap right here holding the airline on. It's well out of the way of anything. Get my hand all behind here. Bring my hand up here. I just stick my hand behind here. ABS line is back on. Brake line is back on. Struts mounted. Everything's done underneath. With the exception of finishing running that airline, this wheel is actually ready to go back on the car. All right, I'm gonna go do the other side. So both fronts are in. What I like to do is, after I get done torquing something, I'll put a line across it with a sharpie. So every nut and bolt that I've had my hands on, um, I'll do that. Now, I gotta say. This is supposed to be like a $6,000 kit. And I'm a little disappointed because I think this bracket that's here for the um, brake hose and the uh, ABS sensor, I think they put two rights on for the right and left side. Because uh, the left side here fit like crap. Every time I turned the wheel, something was hitting. So I had to get a little creative to make some room in here. So when you turn the wheel, nothing's binding. It was either it was either binding up, and as the brake line here came past, it would hit this ABS uh, holder here, right? Um, <clears throat> the other thing that was happening, uh, depending on which way I turned the wheel, it would stretch the brake line really, really tight, which obviously is not good. So, like I said, I just had to get creative in its positioning, but it worked out. The other thing I find disappointing is. They send instructions for the front, but nowhere in here do they have the instructions for the back. They tell you how to program it. They tell you how to mount stuff. Or contents. Call a thank you card. And then this big book that's here. If we thumb through this, it doesn't really get into how to mount the rear shocks or airbags. But they do give you templates for drilling the holes for your tank and the controller and all that. Um, now, speaking of the airbags, you know, the rears. Something else that doesn't come with this Okay, so let me start over. <clears throat> so it doesn't come with instructions on how to install these. However, I've done a lot of YouTube watching. So let me show you something. So in watching all those YouTube videos, you know, people weren't sure of how to either use the, the nut cert that's included or how everything goes together. So with the nut cert, one nut cert is gonna come with the tool already installed. Instructions are right here. You can pause. And then there's a back side. Alright, list the drill size, drill bit sizes that you need, all that. This is the bottom of the bag. This is the top of the bag. My plan is that when they're installed for the air fitting to go that way towards the middle of the car and then up into the car. So let me get that going. Welcome to under the car. So, what we're looking at is the driver's side spring bucket. 
Okay, I just have it all the way down. So through the middle of here, we need to drill a 17 30 second hole. And up here, in the middle, you need to drill a 17 30 second hole. Now according to the paper I showed you before, it's already stamped on there what size hole you need. This is just going to have a bolt passing through it for the spring, uh, for the airbag mount. This one here is going to have a nut cert put in. Here's the nut cert. It comes with the tool. Okay, so you hold on to this, you turn this, and then it'll squash this up here like a rivet. Hence the term riv nut. All right, make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you do this. There's a guy who's had three eye surgeries because of getting metal shavings in his eyes. Let me tell you, it ain't fun. So, run your safety glasses, drill your holes, and uh, get it done. So we have successfully put in the new shock, new airbag, both sides done. So let me go over some installation tips with you real quick. The bolt that goes up top here, it is a 1764, uh, I'm sorry, 1732nds drill bit. If you have a half inch drill bit and that's the biggest you got, you can kind of wall the hole out. I don't suggest it because you can go too big and then your nut cert's not going to work. Um, that's why a job like this I prefer to refer people to an actual professional, such as, I hate to say it myself, so, and that's what ended up happening. On the other side, we actually had a welded nut up top here. Not a big deal. You know, it, to tell you the truth, it was actually easier than using the nut cert. Um, my airlines are here facing into the back, into the car. That way the airlines can get run and not hit anything and not sticking out. Um, there's two plates that go on the bottom. They're self-explanatory. One is a cup that goes in here. The other one is that plate down there nice and simple um, putting the lower control arm bolt in phone a friend uh, is not easy to do by yourself uh, fortunately I phoned a friend he's here he gave me a hand he's been indispensable in doing all this and this is gonna be another one of those that you know I tell you take your time read the directions everything will work out the kit comes with a new spanner wrench for your shocks um, use pipe dope on every threaded fitting that you have. I mean, Teflon tape is fine, get the liquid stuff. Uh, the shocks are a fully adjustable shock coming up through here. Uh, I think they're 30 way adjustable. They come from the factory at set at like 18 or something. Um, I mean, I'm going to put some miles on it, but I'm also going to let the customer put some miles on it and see how they, uh, uh, you know, how they want it set up. The spare parts pile is growing, for sure. We got alien green stuff over there. We got stock stuff over here. We got red stuff over here. Um, yeah, it's, it's a mess. But they'll be back together in a few hours. So next step is going to be to actually start running our airlines. So I'm going to be utilizing this grommet here. And I'm going to be utilizing this grommet here. I'm going to run my airlines down under the car. There's going to be three lines on this side. I'm going to have my left front, left rear, and exhaust. And then the other grommet's going to be the right rear and right front. And then the wires will go up through inside the car. I was afraid that doing the front shocks were going to be the hard part of it. Oh, who knew? Who knew? The rears are... Uh, be prepared to spend some time back there, you know, making it right. Make sure your holes are centered. Um, you know, it's going to give, you know, just an overall better feel to the car that the bags are centered. All right. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, wiring and hose kit unboxed and start running stuff. All right, so like I was talking about, as far as running the air lines for the front, so it comes out of the shock over here, soft clamp here. Here's my union. From there, it goes underneath the skid plate. Runs its way with clamps down the back.
it's gonna come out uh, somewhere over here. And then it's actually, uh, start over. So it comes out, comes up over the wishbone, up over the rear sub axle, uh, the sub assembly, and then through grommet here. Now, little tip in case you didn't figure it out already, make sure you label your line so that when you go to the controller you know which one it is. Uh, if you start cutting them off and forget, it's going to be real, it's going to set you back. All right, so here's the finished installation. Tank, water trap, manifold, compressor. Nice and clean, just the way I wanted it. All right, gang, well, I hope uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I uh, hope somebody learned something with it. Most important things to remember are use pipe dope on all the fittings. Make sure none of the fittings are anywhere near uh, heat shields or anything like that. Cycle the wheels back and forth. Make sure that they can, uh, you know, turn and clear and not hit anything. Uh, tighten all your fittings. I made a mistake on the manifold. I got into a rush. Forgot to tighten all the fittings. Um, but all in all, the car performs the way it's supposed to. So with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave you with this. Just doesn't get old. Now it doesn't get old. So we see you next time. Peace.